Hey, I'm Sharp. How you doing? So today's going to be a little bit different. We are still going to do some benchmarks, but the main takeaway is actually going to be some design considerations if you're implementing collections of your own inside of F-sharp and some of the behaviors that you should be aware of. Now, where is this coming from? I had a problem where I wanted to keep track of int 64s and I wanted to be able to add and remove them and then to iterate through them. And so I was like, well, I'm going to use a hash set. It's the fastest way I can think of doing it. And because of my domain, I didn't need immutability. So, okay, I'm going to use a hash set. I'm like, well, you know, maybe there's another approach, something faster than that. Or I tried, I was, I tried some stuff. It didn't work. But what's interesting is one of the things that I exposed while I was doing it, like, oh, that's really interesting. And I wanted you to, to, to see this so that um, you'll be able to identify it and address it yourself if you end up running into this situation. So what you're seeing here uh, is the code that I put together. And the idea is like, I'm going to create this type, which is a small set, which is only meant to have a few values in it. And it's basically, it's a wrapper over an array. As I add values, I insert them at the end. And as I remove values, I make sure everything's compacted toward the beginning of the array. And so when I want to add to it, I scan the array to see if the value is already in there. If it's not, I add to it. And if I want to remove, I have to scan through the array and I remove the element and I move whatever is at the end uh, to where I just removed a value. And the idea is like, well, you know, I'm, why would I even think of doing that? Like, well, there's only going to be a few values and I'm scanning through an array, which is really fast for a CPU. Yes, I know it's, I know the performance is going to be O N, but that's, that's what the performance is like on an idealized machine, but real CPUs are actually more of array processors than they are like an idealized thing. So yes, I know it wasn't a good idea, but I was, it was more curious. I'm like, huh? So just to, for you to see really quickly, it's just like, okay, I'm going to take a sequence of values. I get the count, how many are in there. And I create an array that I'm going to put the values in and I add some space to it so that there's padding. And then I go and put the values in there. And so what I want to add, I, I have a new value, and then I'm going to iterate through the values to check if it exists or not. If it does not exist, I'm going to try to add it. And notice this line right here. We're going to come back to it. And this is how I'm checking whether the value is in the array or not. and saying, hey, this index is equal to this. Okay. If it doesn't, I will make sure that there's space and edit in there. And if there's not enough space, I'll create a new one and move pieces over. Okay, nothing terribly exciting there. And then with remove, again, very similar. I take a value. Oh, and I should note this orange highlighting you see when I'm using VS Code or Writer, or I don't know if you can do this in Visual Studio. I haven't used it in a while. But I have everything that's mutable in F-sharp as this kind of bright orange color. It's kind of like highlight, hey, like warning. Pay attention here. This is not going to behave uh, the 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 default way. So that's why it's this, this is orange. This orange all over the place. So again, I'm just going through and say if I find the val if I find the value, I'm going to again. This is where I'm checking for the value. Is this value at this index, is it a match or not? And if it is, what I do is I just overwrite it with whatever's at the end. I update how many are in there and I say like, yes, this was found. And I return whether it was found or not here because I want the API to be essentially the same thing as hash set. So I can just like swap them in and out. So that's really all you need to understand about how this is implemented. And then and he, I'm gonna scroll down to the test. There's some other types in here. So in the benchmarks, I say, okay, random generator, some values, the max value. I generate some values, nothing very exciting. I generate some sets. We'll come back to these other ones. And then the test is really simple. For the hash set, I'm just going to iterate through all these values. I'm going to add them. And then for the small set, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to iterate through all these values. And I'm going to add them to the small set. And I do the same thing for remove. Nothing exciting going on there. Now, when I run this, though, actually, I did not need to tab to another window because I already had it here. When I run it, though, here are the results for that. 
and and I and I expected small set to be slower. I didn't expect it to be like massively, massively slower. Now the first thing is like, okay, well that's what I expected. Then I was like, wait, hold up, this is weird, because I I always put memory diagnoser on the benchmark class, and let me show you what that is. So on on the class that has the benchmarks, I put the memory diagnoser attribute on it, and that tells benchmark.net like, hey monitor GC on this and report to me how much garbage, uh, how much are you allocating and what kind of garbage collection is going on. And I was like, hey, I'm garbage collecting here. What the heck? And I purposely created the array at the beginning inside a small set to be extra big. It had tons of space, so I wasn't going to be allocating in this benchmark. But this is as a benchmark. Like, what the heck is going on? This is not what I expect. So that like, okay, what's going on? So from there, what I did is I use dot trace and dot trace is kind of like one of my first things I use to like look at like how is something behaving this is bizarre and in dot trace I'm just profiling the small set add function and I go in here let me expand that back out add and inside of here it's saying it's spending a bunch of time in these methods called generic equality object and generic equality intrinsic and I'm like what the heck is going on now, another thing that you can do to kind of get some introspection as far as like what the heck is going on. Uh, nope, I want, I want Sharp Lab. I took the code for small set. I put it into Sharp Lab so I can look at the IL and see like what the heck is going on. So here's that class there on the left. And here on the right is the IL that was generated. I'm looking at the add method here. And I come down here to see if I see anything that I wouldn't expect. And this is what I don't expect. Why is it calling hash compare generic equality intrinsic? What the heck? And so then I come over to F sharp core and I'm gonna go into source. I'm gonna go into F sharp and I'm gonna go into core. And this, where is it? The primitives, the primitives. Come on, primitives. No, not the prelude types and I've just been in here before so I know that this is where it is like okay so it's calling this function and then that function calls generic equality object so I'm gonna like okay look at that where the heck is that and keep bouncing around okay here it is why is it calling all of this rigmarole why is it needing to do that well so F sharp and this is something I've been digging into. F sharp has, I love F sharp's structural equality. I love its default equality semantics, but there's, there are, to do structural equality right, there's clear, there, there's a bit of code to do that. And so sometimes doing this equality check, let me come back here to my code. This equality check, and I'll go back to that class there at the very beginning. This, this right now is generic, right? This is a T. And so F sharp is having to be correct about what this equality is. And right now it's not doing, it's not doing all the optimizations I think it would do as a developer. Like, well, I know I'm using this as an int. And when I instantiate it, I'm saying this is, the, well, sorry, n64. I'm, when I'm instantiating it, I know it's an n64. So why doesn't this, you know, boil down to just something really, really simple and really fast? Uh, I don't know, but I do know that equality is hard. So that, this is how F sharp is dealing with it. And just like, okay, well, this is less than ideal. So why, what does F sharp do? One, and one of the best things to do to get guidance on how to write great F sharp code is to just look at the F sharp source. And so one thing that we can do, and one area that I've looked at a lot is the map collection, really love map. And I can say, okay, map, what are you doing for comparison? And you see here all over the place is it's using an I compare of, um, of key. Okay, interesting. So I'm going to search around. Ba, ba, ba. Let's see. I'm going to see if I can find the spot. I should have 
when you want to create these da, da, da. where is it where is it so ah here it is sweet so when it's creating there's different functions here for creating a map this one is creating an empty map and what you see is going on here is that it's using the language primitives dot fast generic comparer function to create a comparer that it's going to use instead of just using like less than or equal to. Okay. So what I did is I said, Hey, cool, let's do that. And I made another version, which is the small set fast comparer. And in here I say, Hey, I'm going to create a comparer uh, based on the type T. And then I'm going to use that for my equals. So for the add method and for the remove method, I'm using that fast comparer instead of just the default equals check. Another thing is I looked at hash set since that is what I was comparing it. That's what I'm trying to compare small set to. So I went into the source uh, .net and just searched for hash set to see like, okay, what is it doing under the covers? And the you see what it's using here, in this case is equality comparer of type T default equals. So that's what this is using here. And I have not spent a ton of time looking at the hash set implementation here, but I'm sure it's a treasure trove of things to do for performance. So I'll likely come back and look at it more. I'm like, okay, let's take this approach as well. So in my code, I'm gonna go ahead and collapse this. I also created a small set equality and called the equality comparer. And here I'm using that same method here where equality compare of type T default equals. And I said, hey, Let's see what that performance is like. And then in the last case, just for just for kicks, I said, you know what? What happens if I just make a concrete version of this where I said like, hey, I'm not even going to make it generic. I'm just say it's int64. And I said, the values you're going to give me are int64. And so now when it's doing this equals, it knows the concrete type in this case. And so, okay, what is the performance of that going to look like? So I created... Down here in the benchmarks, I create all the different versions of this. One that's the default behavior that I did originally, the fast compare, the quality compare, and the one using the concrete type of uh, the N64. And when we run that, we see some very different results. So now we're looking at what the results of all that testing is. So hash set which is, you know, the .NET hash set. Still clearly the fastest by far. But now we see small set is still terrible. When we use the fast compare, so the method used by F sharps map, much faster, order of magnitude faster. When we use the method used by the hash set, we again have about a doubling of performance as well. And then when we use a concrete type of in 64 when we bake it right in it's even still yet a little bit faster but nothing terribly significant so what and we see the same trend for removes right same thing so the important thing to consider here when writing f sharp code is the default equality is probably exactly what you want but if you're writing your own collection that is using equality or comparison, the, that default behavior might come back and bite you in terms of performance. So be aware of that. And my recommendation at the very least is to use the F-sharp fast comparer and store it in the class so that you can use it for doing all your comparisons. And I, I'm not as familiar with the equality, the, the method used in hash set. So I can't speak to what the shortcomings are of that yet, but uh, I'm going to investigate a little bit more because clearly there's some more speed that can be had there. And the other good news is all of our garbage collection has gone away. So thank goodness. So I hope that was helpful. That was something that kind of surprised me. And I just wanted you to be aware of it when you're doing lots of comparisons or equals. And so I hope you find that helpful. If you have any more questions, please feel free to comment or message me on Twitter. Uh, I love doing this. I'm just having a blast. But if there's something in particular you want me to look at, I would be happy to do that. Thank you very much and have a great day.